actually, I'm so sorry, can we actually do number 23, the cylindrical shelf? Mm -hmm. That's fine. That's probably a good idea. Yeah. Well, the first thing you have to do is you have to have, actually have to draw the area that you're rotating. Um, it shouldn't be too hard to sketch this curve even without a calculator. Obviously, when x is 0, y is 0. And when x is 1, y is 1. Um, so uh, the general formula, is, the general thing is going to look like this. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just have, you just have to get the general sense for what the curve looks like. And we want to know the area between y equals 0, x equals 1 in this curve. So this is the area that we're looking at. But we're not rotating around the x-axis like we were in the previous problem. We're rotating around the y-axis. So can you describe in words what the three-dimensional figure is going to look like here? Like a dish? Like a yeah, dog. a bowl was what I was thinking. Uh, I'm not really good at drawing bowls, but uh, if we rotated this around, I don't know how do you draw a bowl, something like, uh, something like this. No, I can't do it. I don't know how to get the rest of the bowl. It's hard because the inside looks different than the outside. Yeah. All right. Well, think of a bowl. It's going to look like a bowl. You don't actually have to be able to draw the three-dimensional figure anyway to get this right. You just have to draw the curve. But if we rotate around the y-axis, we're going to get a bowl. Uh, these will be kind of the edges anyway. Now, we're going to do this by making, uh, by making rectangular strips. Well, should our rectangular strips be parallel or perpendicular to the y-axis? Parallel, but based on what we learned earlier, because they told us to use the cylindrical shells method. Well, in the cylindrical shells method, you make a rectangular strip. Or a bunch of rectangular strips that are parallel to the axis you're rotating around. So here's something that's parallel to this axis. In the previous problem, the, the rectangular strips looked like this as well, but that's because we were rotating around a different axis. So. Um, this would be perpendicular to the x-axis or parallel to the y-axis. Now, what are we going to get when we rotate this around? So now we're going to get a cylindrical shell. Um, this is not called the washer method, because the washer method is like the disk method when you are rotating, um, the, a, when you're, uh, rotating a strip that is uh, perpendicular to the axis that you're looking at. Now, in a sense, this looks like a washer. Yeah. Uh, but the difference is the washer method is when the height of the washer is very thin. And the cylindrical shell method is when the thickness is very thin. 
So here we have a very thin th thickness. Why is it so thin? Because the thickness here just represents this distance of the rectangle. It's between these two points of the rectangle, which is given by our differential. So the differential here is giving us the thickness of the cylindrical shell. This is what your book would consider the washer method. Now, the thickness is substantial, and it's the height that's very thin. So this would be the other method where you're using strips that are perpendicular to the axis that you're rotating around. So this is what your book would consider a washer. This is the same general shape as a washer, um, but instead of having a uh, very small height and a big thickness, it has a big height and a small thickness. The DX. Uh, well, in this case, I call it dy because it would be the vertical variable. So this is what you would get from the washer method. Okay, anyway, we have to go back to here. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to figure out the volume of this cylindrical shell. Wait, I'm sorry. Um, really quick. In the book, I I feel like the names are the opposite. Mm -hmm. The methods of cylindrical shells gives us this one, which is what we did for that one. Remember the other one we used a pi r squared formula. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we'll see in a second that that's the formula we're going to use here. So what's the volume of this cylindrical shell? Well, um, we need to find kind of uh, what, this, what the area is at the top here. Well, the area at the top is the circumference times the thickness. Uh, and then we need to multiply that by the height of the cylindrical shell. So if you could figure out the area of the top face and then multiply by the height, that would give us our volume. Well, our circumference is 2 pi times the radius. The thickness here is given by dx. The thickness of the cylindrical shell is dx. And what's the height? Well, the height is this distance, which is given by our function. So that's given by our function. And what's our radius? I didn't draw this very symmetrically. The radius is this distance, which is just x. You can see from this picture that the radius of the cylindrical shell is just x. So this should be pretty much the formula they have in the book, 2 pi x times y times dx. Uh, and then we want to add together all the different cylindrical shells that we can get from all the rectangular strips. So the total area is going to be 2 pi x y dx. And what are our limits of uh, integration going to be? Wait, isn't it like the um, isn't it like hollow that part or no? Yeah, it is hollow, but we've actually already taken that into account in this formula. Um, we really are f figuring out here the volume just of the shell. Um, so we're figuring out what's the circumference and then multiplying it just by this small thickness. We're just multiplying by this small thickness. Um, so we really are just figuring out uh, the volume that's enclosed inside of here. Um, but uh, so this really is the formula for the volume of a cylindrical shell. But uh, if that's not easy to see, we can just memorize that this is the formula for the volume of a cylindrical shell. And where'd you get the, why is the R at? Oh, no. So the radius here is just what our x coordinate is. So it'd be from um, 0 to 1? That's right, x here. So notice we're focusing on integrating with respect to x. That's why we have a dx here. How do we know we're integrating with respect to x? Because we're going to draw one rectangular strip that looks like this, 
then another rectangular strip that looks like this, then another rectangular strip that looks like this. We're drawing different rectangular strips at different places on the x-axis. So x is the variable that we're changing from Oh, what did we say? Zero to one? Okay. Um, now again, we can't use this unless we plug something in for y. Everything here has to be in terms of x. So what are we going to plug in for y? Um, x to the fourth. Because that's what our y term is here. All right, and now we can work this out. This is 2 pi x to the fifth 